Hello everyone, welcome back to another Age of Empires 4 commentary. I am Beyond and today we have an awesome matchup for you. We have Beastie playing in the teal as the Japanese. Would highly recommend going and checking out all of his channels. I think the sub is is still going on, so we'll leave his Twitch in the description below. And then down below we have Valdemar playing as the Ayubids. This should be a very interesting matchup. BC's Japan has been very, very good. Watching him absolutely slay it on the ladder and bringing it against a very high-level player like Valdemar, a.k.a. The Kid. If you want to watch a bunch of different guides on how different openings work for all the new civs, Valdemar and BC are both your guys. We'll leave both of their YouTube links in the description below as well. Um, Valdemar has been putting out a ton of content, so I would highly recommend it. This matchup, I don't have a ton of experience or, on honestly, back-end stats to help me out on what it's going to shade in the, the factor of. But I do know that if you don't do early damage to Japan, they can get pretty untenable quite quickly. And we can see that BC is going for an early stone. So that I wouldn't be shocked if we see an early expand. Japan with lots of TC is exactly how you want to play them. And if you don't punish them early, they can really get out of hand quite quickly with all those samurais coming in. And if you don't have Joan of Arc on your team, you have really no answer for the early on. Now we have a, def a bunch of different selections that Valdemar could be going. We have the Eco Wing, Military Wing, Culture Wing, and Trade Wing, of course. But remember, these are different than the Abbasid. Um, they go for the Econ Wing is upon completion grants three villagers, and Orchards gain 50 additional food. We have the Military Wing, which upon completion, Cavalry units gain ability to construct siege weapons, which is crazy. It also produces one Desert Raider every two minutes for the rest of the game. So free military forever. Culture Wing, which let's see what we're going with. What are we, what are we going to see? And we're seeing it quite soon. Culture Wing is advancing to the next age. Takes 4% less time and less resources, which is a great one. And then the Trade Wing. Every three minutes a Trade Caravan arrives with a random selection of four favorable exchanges for resources, which is always really, really good. So let's see what Voldemort decides to go with here. We're going to be going with the economic wing. So three villagers for free is going to be the selection of Valdemar. The kid is going for an eco play because Japan is going for an eco play. Um, they've both already scouted out each other what's doing. We can see that Beast is going to be running by, sees exactly which wing it is. If you don't know how to tell which wing it is, I do have a little short on my channel. would highly recommend checking that out. It's quite simple. But the eco wing, kind of like a bulb, like, like, an, like, like economy. Like kind of like trees, stuff like that. We have the military wing, which is like kind of like a royal crown. So think of it like military and where's the crown. Culture wing is just a tall building. Um, it's on the top end side of the thing. And trade wing is just a bump out of the actual building. It's the only one that doesn't go above. Um, it doesn't go above the actual um, house of wisdom. So if you're looking for it quite quickly, um, just look for those kind of distinguishing factors. Um, the only ones that look very similar uh, at the beginning are the eco wing and military wing. So just know that if it's on the bottom hand side of the um, house of wisdom, it's the eco wing and the top end side. If you don't want to wait for the crown to finish, it's on the top end side. So those are the quickest things that you can kind of look at um, very quickly. I know it's very hard to kind of grasp in the moment but it is possible and you know you just get used to it after a while we do have the core storehouse coming in which is the pretty much the ideal landmark at this point that every single japanese player is going it produces um farms around it and then when it stops producing farms it produces wood instead the farms go down i believe at the bottom left hand corner over here or the, the top side over here um, it's one of them. It always goes to the exact same location. So if you put it at the top end side of your village, uh, of your TC, I believe it will always spawn the closer um, field, uh, farms first, which of course are less rateable. And for Japan, that's exactly what you want to do. Remember Japan also, the farmhouses and these forges act as um, depots to drop off uh, resources for. So it does allow you to get a pretty, pretty good economy going quite quickly. Now, if you have made it this far in the video and you have been enjoying all these commentaries that I'm producing, please do leave a like. Also, I've tried out some new thumbnails. Let me know what you think in the comments. I have a poll on my original page, but and people seem to be liking them. But just to verify, let me know if you like um, what you're seeing these days. Um, and if not, that's I totally get that. I can always change it up. I'm trying my best here at the YouTube um, algorithm slash grind. Also, if you do enjoy them as well and you want to keep coming back, you can always subscribe as well. But the like and comments help so, so much. So I pre appreciate every single one of you. We can see that Valdemar has jumped out to a quick three villager lead. And that is because the, the um, culture, the uh, sorry, the eco wing has been completed, which gives him a quick free lead on that front. 
So it should be interesting. Now, one thing to note is the Japanese do not struggle much at all with um, with with food or anything like that. As you can see, there it is up top, right in safe and sound. Beastie, what are we doing? Got to move these lads. We got to get them cooking somewhere. They will get orders quite soon, I am sure of it. There they go. They're off back to work quickly over the sheep. But early on, it's very important. Um, to, ooh, we do see that they're starting to fight back. The TC was looking to be put a little bit farther back, but Valdemar is getting a little bit aggressive here with these horsemen. And this actually is really, really nice here. Actually, he's going to get a villager kill, I believe. Oh, they're blocking it out. Wait, one more poke. Does actually go down. So TC prevented and goes down. So now BC has to put a TC in a less ideal position. Um, as I was mentioning, it's one of those things where we're trying to get... You're trying to get as many resources as possible. And this was on the deer pack because while Japan doesn't struggle with food later on, early on, both sides, both the Abbasid and Japan, definitely struggles a little bit. So they might actually get another... Um, villager here. No, it doesn't look like it, it's the case. That TC is just in range of this one. So well placed there from Beastie. But both sides are going to be struggling a little bit with food. So if you can deny that TC on a deer pack, it's always super important. Now, I know this is not news, groundbreaking uh, news at all, but the newer TCs, remember the expand, they have three less um, slots for the villagers to actually jump into. And then they also have a lot lower range than the main TC. Uh, main TC looks a lot bigger than this one. So remember, Gilded Archers and English Longbowmen can outrange them, which will be absolutely devastating in the long run against them. I haven't seen English in a while. Uh, we've only been seeing the new civs, but I'm sure that matchup will start to becoming more and more prevalent. And I actually wouldn't be surprised if English is a pretty decent matchup into Japan because of that early pressure it can provide um, outside the range of those TCs with all, that, with all those Longbowmen because those things arrive at like the five-minute mark. So unless you can really cook a, a TC really, really quickly, it can provide a lot of damage and a lot of annoying damage on top of that. Because while those horsemen were able to dive that TC, it's not quite the same for those English longbowmen. They can really stand outside and cause a lot of issues. These horsemen, though, are getting so much value right now, pushing Beastie off of the gold and these berries, as I mentioned. It's incredibly important for food for both these civilizations. Uh, they want to be going up to Castle Age as soon as they possibly can. Um, Baltimore is definitely investing a little bit more um, just to really, I mean, he's finding he's finding a home with all this harass, so my, mine as well. We can see uh, an Ona is out at this point and a Spearman to deflect any of this nonsense coming out. So they will be able to thwart this at least with the help of the back end TC. Japan is all about getting up those additional TCs. They want to get those upgrades as fast as possible to the Daimyo Manor. You can see more stone is coming in. So Beastie is looking to start to really start to click. And the IO bids, just like the Abbasid traditionally, you can see a TC is up as well. They're thinking the exact same thing. We have Tatara coming in, which is that increased mele uh, melee damage of all non-siege units. We also have that first upgrade to the Daimyo Manor for the main TC. So it looks like we have more and more horsemen coming in. These, um, This one spearman is going to get surrounded and actually gets taken down quite quickly. So these horsemen are doing super, super well into these light infantry over here. They are countered by archers and knights, but they, are, they, they don't really exactly... It doesn't say they're they're good against um so they're not really good against cavalry they're weak against armored targets so i guess since these aren't armored they'd be okay into these as you can see they're doing a decent amount of damage so i guess they are um, but they don't have a direct usually it says like a direct thing where they counter um certain units um but there you go so they would be the they would be a nice selection but there's a lot of them here and valdemar is causing a lot of damage you can see that tc that daimyo manor is cooking at this front um with all those arrows so now a outpost is coming in and you should just the the goal right now is to try to just cause as much harm as possible to japan as you possibly can in the early game because even the ayabits i don't know if it's a guarantee that kind of like the abba says if you make it late game i don't think it's the exact same kind of I think Japan's late game is definitely stronger and we can see there's a lot of barracks coming in. The infrastructure is being built to cause a lot of damage and another villager goes down. That is four from Valdemar. So uh, while he is investing a decent amount, it is turning out and that's going to be one production down. You can see skating the, the line right here. Might be able to actually get this barracks, but is going to decide to start harassing. I think this wood, uh, this stone over here would be incredibly important. 
um, to start harassing. But I think they're I think BC is trying to get up to Daimyo Palace or maybe an upgrade over on this manor. We'll have to wait and see what he decides to do. But 600 is coming in quickly. And now that gold is secure, there's a 600. So let's see if they're going to be popping it for that upgrade. Um, we're just holding it for now. We'll have to wait and see what BC decides to do. There is the upgrade coming in. So BC feeling pretty safe and sound because none of these are armor units. So you cannot dive the Japanese Daimyo Manors. That is something that's going to end in a very, very poor... Um, thing for you this wall is going to go up but two more villagers will be going down so a huge pickup there for Valdemar. Valdemar is doing a great job at harassing this is exactly what you want to do against the Japanese I would go but we can go back and check what Valdemar has got back here we have a barracks we have some archery ranges we do have upgrades coming in as well more barracks are on the way so maybe a ghoulam transition might be coming um for us which would make sense because as you can see bc is heavily investing in these ona and these ona are very very good against light units but not so good against those armored units we do have a daimyo a bannerman coming out um the katana one so a nice um kind of selection over here they increase military uh, infantry damage a lot and these archers will be able to cook these down if they're able to ever actually kind of get in a good spot but they're going to be tracked down quite quickly there is Valdemar going into that castle age and as I said it there is the Gulum transition because this army composition is just begging for that to happen but BC senses blood in the water he's built up enough of these uh, just insane Ona just sprinting down this poor Ayubid's army and cooking through all of these horsemen, just slicing and dicing their way through. But the Ghoulams are on their way. There's eight in queue, and that will be enough to kind of put a stop to all these shenanigans. And here comes the Ghoulams, and when BC sees these, he might be falling back. No, actually going to take on, uh, trying to actually trade in pretty proactively into them, because there's not enough of them actually to stop uh, much of anything at this point. The archers were cut down a ton, so BC did pull the trigger at the exact right time. So it's just a very unfortunate timing attack where the Ghoulams were not in tow. If Valdemar had pulled back slightly earlier, I think this would be a much different fight, especially with those eight archers in the back end side with the Ghoulams um, supporting. We can see now they're kind of they're starting to fall upon all of these TCs. As you can see, only seven are in there, which makes it a lot easier to defend these types of things. But good news for Voldemort picking off another few. Actually, that one is going to be saved. But as I mentioned earlier, food is going to be the biggest thing for these two civilizations. Japan, of course, gets this beautiful farm transition for free. And now BC's on the front foot. He can start to expand to these farther reaches like these berries over here. And when Valdemar is being constricted with this army, which is this is going to be a huge, a nice um, harass over here for Beastie. Might get a few more. Let's see if he can get them. He's diving. He's going to be pulling back. So this is going to be the issue. Is there's no really farm available. There's no really food available for Valdemar. You can see not really producing much at all. We can switch over here. Only 700 at this point, And Beastie has 1,400. So he can produce this army pretty much for free at this point. Obviously, it's not for free, but the trading is in an advantageous spot for BC. Baltimore still has the villager lead, which is very, very nice because of all that harassment done early on. But we're going to need more and more of these ghoulums to actually make it um, make it work. And we do see that the culture wing was selected for Baltimore. And it looks like we'll be he'll, BC will be focusing down this mosque because he's trying to get with his dervish all of these. Uh, Wolo coming in. Let's see if he can get it just does not get it that was so close but it was only chance to actually get out so i do like the call there from valdemar looks like bc um, bc was able to clean up the ghoulams on the top hand side and there's just so many of these owners on the map they are slicing through anything that they see and valdemar has not been able to get a mass of anything to actually protect them they're diving just two t two towers for fun at this point it's cutting down any villagers in their wake and these towers are going to be able to go down even though they're not armored they do not have enough there's so many of them that they're able to just do this so quickly Valdemar pulls out smartly trying to defend this as much as he possibly can because he knows he's going to be losing these five villagers quite quickly and there they go completely cut down losing three of them and now it's six to six in that count the ghoulam is trying to do as much as they possibly can with these two glooms here it might be enough to thwart them it is just in time because the all you need to do is buy time for them to be ripped through but the floating gate is coming in for beastie a little bit forward over here so bc will be castle age soon and with this army hitting castle age it's going to be an incredibly scary one to deal with Valdemar is getting a sizable amount of archers up 13 in tow right now 
And here comes the moss. The moss will actually will be going down. So Valmar not actually able to save this unless this villager, is there a villager in here? It is not, there's no villagers over here, it's just the archers. So it's actually gonna be going down, which is gonna set him back a little bit of um, resources because now this dervish can actually take this relic home and put it safe and sound here. BC is gonna be hitting Castle Age and will be able to collect a few relics on his own. But with this many archers, BC will have to fall back. Um, and also with the Castle Age upgrades, but they don't actually have them. The only one that has Castle Age upgrades right now are the Ghulams, there's only three of them on the map. So not nearly enough if they decide to all turn and fight all at one spot. And just as I say that, they do turn and fight. But with this many archers, now they're pulling back quickly. Um, probably trying to group up with these ones. Or BC is going to be constantly harassing with all of these. And there they are. The Katana Bannerman is with them. And they smell blood in the water. It's like Shark Week over here. They are going to be getting another two villagers. There they go. And these have been reinforced. They're going to be going after the um, lighter one. And look at how much they can tank, even with two towers. And again, it's all about this food. This food is not being able to be protected in the slightest. And that's causing major issues for Voldemort at this point. And another villagers go down. Japan can just keep spamming these as much as they possibly can. And here comes the Samurai upgrades. Here comes the Ona upgrades. Here comes the Shogun Castle upgrade coming in. Where is it? We already have one Shogun Castle and the next... Oh, so that just popped over here. So we already have a Shogun Castle out on the map. We have the Floating Gate. We have now we're putting more forward and forward outposts. And Valdemar is able to clean up a lot of these over here. The Katana Bannerman will be going down. That Now that they have these Castle Age um, archers, which is able to make light work of these. So archers will be the move and it was the correct choice. But now there are Samurai that are coming out on the map. And these are veteran Samurai with that um, Bannerman coming in. And these archers aren't gonna stand a chance once those go up. Valdemar is finally, finally um, walling off this section, trying his best to secure this deer. It's a lot of food that he really, really needs and wants. This tower is starting to cause a little bit of damage and Valdemar gets a cheeky kill. Can he get it? He no, does not get it actually in time which is just in time, BC is now secured the lead in terms of villagers with all this harassment, 13 in total, and more have gone down. Finally able to put a stop to this constant raiding, but that has allowed BC to get up to a very nice spot, very comfortable at this point. Has gold in the back end side, more berries, a full farm transition, we have free wood coming in as well. And look at this farm transition going around this entire Shogun Castle, so feeling very safe and sound as well um, when you're around that. And now relics are starting to be collected, so even more passive gold is coming in. Samurai are starting to hit a massive number. We're gonna have 15 out on the map. We have increased uh, melee damage coming in for Beastie. And then we have also the Wedge Rivets, which is that critical range defense, which will make these um, which will make these Ona even stronger and these Samurai even tankier. And this is the full on engage. There's not enough Ghulams here to put a stop to this. And you can see they completely slice through them like melted butter. And they're just gonna be running at them at full speed. No worries in the world. More archers are coming in. So BC might have to fall back from this one because that is a ton of archers at this point. 28 on the map. They can almost one-shot Samurai, which is not what you want to see if you're the Japanese player. It is what you want to see if you're the Ayubits player, but I don't think there's gonna be enough. They're gonna be causing a ton, a ton of damage. This Dervish is trying to get involved, but that will be sliced down quite quickly. And now the remaining forces of the Ayubids player are here. We have Wallo going down. BC letting Baldemar know. Hey, I got more and more relics. You should try to get some more. BC throwing down a forward town center, which he can upgrade into um, a fortress, which will make it even harder for Valdemar to actually move out on the map, which is exactly what BC is going for. I've been playing against a few Jap Japanese players, and that's exactly what they want to do. They want to throw down these very, very large fortresses um, and make it very, very hard for you to deal with and actually move out. That rocket um, upgrade is nuts and it definitely does a ton of damage. Valdemar sees what's going down. We can see that VC has enough stone as well. So the first thing that will be done is a Daimyo Manor. There it is. And it's gonna be securing this middle gold once he upgrades that, it will be even scarier. You can see that this Samurai and Ona force is hanging out over here with these two Bannermen and they're making the engage right now. This is a kind of, I think it's a in favor of, in theory, um, the Ibids player, but I think there's just too many here. There's 46 at this point. 
or sorry, 30, 36, um, with more on the way. And this surround is gonna make it even rougher. If these archers were allowed to just free fire on the Ona, they might be in a okay spot. But with this many samurai, 16 already up at this front something they can really do you can see they can completely rip through these ona over here on the side which is why i said it's kind of in favor of the ayabits player but the japanese one uh units are just so so strong and now they're moving out in the map the second upgrade for the daimyo palace is coming into play which makes that this gold even more secure and it'll be a constant center japan is able to just fully scale look at this beautiful farm transition in the backhand side over here you can utilize houses as a drop off point remember so if you want to make a beautiful base building japan might be your pick and then the constant stream of units bc is now saving up he has a ton of gold so maybe he's thinking about imperial age because valdemar does not have nearly enough units to actually do for that we do have crossbowmen in the mix which is an excellent choice for valdemar this is a great engage as well picking off so many units for free right there so beastie still might be thinking about going um that imperial age we'll have to wait and see if he if he determines this this to be too scary he will start to make some units but no units are in the way so bc thinks he can hold just kidding there it is decides that he does not have nearly enough just in case um Baltimore goes for an all-in that's the critical thinking point uh, that these top tier players make on an exact um basis and we have another upgrade coming in there's a shogun castle so that is going to be that's going to be a very, very tough to break down. A lot of armor. Um, it's going to make it very hard to, to break through, plus these outposts on the outhand side. But as I was mentioning, this is exactly what these top tier players do. They sit in the moment, they assess what's going on. They saw that military. They know that Baltimore's going to be having siege quite soon. They've decided that they do not have enough to deal with that. So they, they must make the correct decision and produce enough so they can actually defend. Then they can safely go up to Imperial Age after that. BC still floating a ton of gold. Has every upgrade in the book pretty much. Actually does not have um, does not have the upgrades that I actually thought he he might. Um, uh, it looks like he actually does have them all. It just doesn't pick them up because of the unique upgrades. So hopefully a new AI will be good. And there is the rocket upgrade you can see. Kind of looks like a little firework, um, which is just so, so cool. But look at that, that IU bid fling but look at how little damage it does to the shogun castle because of that fire armor and there we go traditional mango shots are now going in but we'll need a um trebuchet if he wants to do a little bit of damage or the bombard when they do come in we do see the tower of sultan coming in this is to make it so they can get through um something like the shogun castle so we'll have to wait and see if it's the move or if it's just going to completely go out and there is the gunsmith coming in for bc going up to that imperial age and has plenty of gold to spend can buy any unit he wants especially let me see if i can find a archery range i don't see one i don't see one we have more and more barracks coming in so it looks like the move might just be full upgrades. Yep, we're going all barracks, so it's just going to be tons and tons of upgrades. And BC's going to be able to rep just produce so many of these. And it's, it's going to be very, very hard to deal with a constant stream of, of Imperial Age Samurai all up in your business. And remember, this gunsmith can produce these special units, and there they are. The o Ozutsu? Ozutsu? I think that's what they're called, but let me know in the comments if that's not how you pronounce them. But all every single upgrade coming in, he used that gold stockpile quite quickly, and seven of these are on the way. And I don't know what Baltimore is going to be able to do into these. Still very far behind in terms of getting those upgrades. We do have these crazy looking things coming in to take down the Shogun Castle, the Tower of Sultan. So as you know, um, in this game, if you see that your opponent dings up to a new age, it's always good to start attacking. But these things just, I mean, they take forever to get there. No, look at this thing. Look at how slow they are. And there we go. There's more and more damage coming down. Baltimore has to go all in for this nose full well. This is the only chance he has. When all these upgrades come in, it's going to be a different story. The Ghoulims are going in for the front line and they're trying to take down this they're trying to take it down kind of like covered rams almost if you will they can shoot a little bit so they are effective Baltimore is doing a lot of damage but look at how good that palace is and now we have those azutsu in the backhand side cleaning up these ghouls and once these ghouls are cleaned up it's going to be a lot of um 
archers dealing with samurai which is not what you want to be seeing if you are the Ayabits player and now the stream is coming in 14 and 11 are being produced only three on the side for Valdemar cannot keep up with the economy of this Japanese player and GG's is called well played by both sides but that is what happens when you let a Japanese player fully get up to that Imperial Age but I will say Valdemar did everything he possibly could to attack do lots of damage but it wasn't enough to thwart BC's Japan which is proving to be very very good Guys, if you did enjoy, please do like and subscribe, and I hope you have a great night.